Just imagine your friend, your neighbor, your parents are sitting at home on their Android TV. In my example, my Nvidia Shield Pro. Now they need some help with their device. So they call you up and they say, hey, tech doctor, could you please help me with my device as I don't know what to do. So you then grab your phone, you press one button on there. If you notice, nothing came up on the screen, no password prompts, no configuration. And now straight away, you can see exactly what they can see on their screen on your phone. On top of that, we now have a virtual pointer. I can say, for example, hey, friend, what you have to do is go over to Downloader. I can then start the application for them. Here we are in Downloader. So for example, they were saying, hey, Tech Doctor, how do I download some 1080p wallpaper for my custom launcher? Well, I'll say, all you need to do is just go over to your browser. There's your browser there. Then go to the search field, just search for 1080p wallpapers. Here's a bunch of wallpapers. You can then click on one of them and then just download away. If you want to access your favorites, click over here. So basically, as we can see, I have complete control of this Nvidia Shield from the internet. That connection is going from my cell phone through the cell phone provider, through the internet, and then onto my Nvidia Shield. So really we could say a complete remote access solution. So in this video today, I'm going to demonstrate three different ways or three different use cases for this particular solution. The first one's going to be the most basic one where let's say for example, you want to help out your friend or your family member, or maybe one of your customers, you can configure this application. So whenever they need help, they can give you a call. Then through the application, you can press a button. They'll then see a prompt on their screen asking them, do you allow this person to remote into your device? They have to say yes to that. Once they say yes to that, you can then see their screen on your phone or whichever device you're going to run this application from. They can then talk you through the problem, show you the stuff and then take it from there. That's the first use case. The second use case is similar, but in this example, not only do they want you to see their screen, they actually want you to take controls. Maybe they need your help in showing something, how to open something or find something or something else. Whatever they need you to do, you can do that from your phone and they'll see the results on their screen. So the third process is the most complicated one. In the third process, we can now make a connection from our cell phone onto their device and it doesn't matter if they're there or not. So nobody needs to be there to accept a connection, to accept a prompt. You can take full control of their device without them doing anything themselves. Just like we saw at the start of this video, I was able to take control of my shield from my cell phone and there was no prompts, no acceptance or anything like that. I could do everything from my cell phone. So. Lots of stuff coming up guys. Make sure you take a minute to hit that like button. Please do hit the subscribe button. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Okay, so to start this process, we need to use the downloader application on our Shield to make a connection to my website and then to download two applications. Now to get to my website, just go to the short URL, which is http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash tduk, that's me, and the number's 2019. Let's type that in and click on go. Now, when you get to my website, I have created a dedicated tutorial on how you can remote control your NVIDIA Shield from the internet. Now to access that, if you go over to the hamburger menu and click on the three lines here, and let's click on tutorials. Now the latest tutorial in the list will be on how you can do that. Now, if you don't see the latest tutorial for whatever reason, just go to the menu on the top right, click here and select the option, disable JavaScript and reload page. This will then force your browser to refresh its cache and update the page. Once you've done that once, click on the same button again, just to make sure that we do leave JavaScript enabled. Let's click on that. And let's now open up the latest tutorial. And here is the latest tutorial. So how you can remote control your NVIDIA Shield from the internet. Let's scroll down. Here we can see some of the benefits, like you don't have to make any changes to your router. Now just on that, I actually made a video on this about a year ago. And in that video, I used the SCR CPY program or application to make a connection via ADB. And although it did work, it did require multiple commands. And it also required us to make a change on our router or router to allow that inbound connection. With this process, 
no changes to your router are needed. All of this will work automatically once you have configured it properly. Okay, let's scroll down. And here is a step-by-step -step guide on what we need to install. Near the bottom here, we should see the two applications. So here is the first application. Let's click on that. Give that a second. Let's scroll down and click on the green download button. So that's the first thing we've installed today. Let's click on install. Let's click on done. Let's press the back button on the remote. And now let's install the plugin, which is this thing down here. Let's click on that. Scroll down and click on the green download button and click on install. Okay, so that's all we need to do on the NVIDIA Shield in terms of installation. Let me now jump over to my Shield and I'll talk you through the setup process. Now, let me just take this opportunity to say a massive thanks to all of the new members of my channel. Your support really does mean a lot. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I am doing a special promotion for the first 50 members whereby all of you can join my private chat group. And in this chat group, we can talk about stuff, we can provide support to each other, and we can even share our APKs. So some of those applications, some of those toolboxes I'm working on, you guys can get early access to them. So if that sounds of interest to you, do have a look out for the join button. Thank you. Okay, so you've installed both applications from our website, the AnyDes application and the special plugin that we need. Now that we have both those things installed, let's go and open up AnyDesk. Now, in case you're wondering, why am I using a custom launcher on my NVIDIA Shield Pro? Well, the way that AnyDesk works is, it has to pass through those screen touches or the mouse pointer if you are doing this from a computer. It has to pass those interactions onto your launcher. Unfortunately, the stock launcher will not accept those screen touches. That means if you do want to have full control of your device from the internet, you have to use a custom launcher. Now, if you're happy with the first use case, which is that you want to just be able to see somebody else's screen from the internet, then you can use the stock launcher. But again, if you're to take full control, it has to be a custom launcher. Okay, so let's open up AnyDesk for the first time. Let's click on OK. And we can see that you get the warning about the plugin activation. Let's click on OK. Let's ignore that message there. Let's press the back button on the remote. Let's go over to settings. And what we're going to do now is give permission to this application to access the accessibility service and also give it permission so it can draw over applications. So let's go down. Let's go to device preferences. Let's scroll down. Let's go to accessibility. Scroll down. And here we can see the AnyDesk control service AD1. And this is actually the plugin that this uses for that control. So let's give that permission. Click on enable, click on okay. That's all done. Let's press the back button again. Let's go back again. Let's go to apps. Let's scroll down and let's go to special app access. And here we can see we have the option draw over other apps. Let's click on that now, scroll down. And here where we see any desk, let's click on that just to make sure that any desk has the permission to draw over your applications. Okay, once you've confirmed that, let's press the home key again. Let's go back to any desk. Let's click on don't show again. Let's click on okay. okay. Let's just click through the tutorial. Okay, and here we are. Now straight away we can see this is the special address, your custom address for your particular device. And this is the address that we need to type in onto our cell phone or onto our PC or wherever else we've installed the AnyDesk application to make that connection. Now in case you're wondering, what's this tile over here? Well, that's actually my Amazon 4K Fire Stick. And actually, yeah, let's just click on that for a second. With one click, I now am controlling my Fire Stick, guys. So I'm putting the finishing touches on that. This application does require some extra permissions to get it working on the Fire Stick. So I will be releasing that in the next few days. Make sure you are subscribed for that. Let's back out of that. Go to settings on the top left. Let's go to settings again. Here, for example, you can set up an alias for your machine. Let's click on that. So here, for example, I can type in a friendly name just so I know what this device is. Uh, okay, so let's click on okay. Okay, so now we have an alias there. Let's go down. Now in the security options, we have a couple of things that we can change. Now, if you are going for the second option, which is you want to help out somebody or maybe one of your customers, but they're always going to be there when you take control, then you can leave these as default. And what that basically means is they need to open up the AnyDesk application for you to make that inbound connection. If this application is not open, then you cannot make that connection. So this again goes back to, do you want to have the second use case or the third use case? Now, in my example, because I want to take control of the device, 
regardless of what they're doing, what application is open, I'm going to change this option to always show incoming session requests, which means whatever's happening on the device, that connection prompt will always come up. Now, if I want to have unattended access, which means it requires nobody to be there, whatever's happening on the device, I can just take over. We need to enable this option. Let's do that now. And we now need to set a password. Now, if you are doing this for your customers or for your family, I do recommend using a complex password. In my example, I'm just gonna go for an easy one. Okay, let's click on go. And we can now see unattended access is now enabled. Let's scroll down. Now we'll see the input mode from our cell phone in just a second. But for example, you can specify whether you want to use a mouse mode or touchpad mode, and you will see in certain situations, certain modes do work better than others. But for now, let's leave that as default. Now in the display options, you can specify whether you want the best quality audio video, whether you're going for balance or just optimize reaction time. Now, if you are going to be doing this from another country or from another state or from another part of the world, if you want the best possible performance, I would select the last option, which is optimize reaction time. Let's leave that as is. Now, if you want your friend or family member or customer to see a remote cursor, which means as you move the mouse on your cell phone, they'll see it on their screen as well. You can enable that option. But let's leave that as is. Now, the rest of these options we can leave as blank. So let's back out of that now. Okay, so here we have a code. We have my address here. Let me now grab my cell phone. Okay, so here is my cell phone. Let me start the AnyDesk application. Okay, so it's now asking us for a remote address. So let's type this thing in now. So I'm going to be typing in TDUK Shield 01. I'm now going to do the at sign and then type in AD. Let's click on connect. And here we can just see now we get an authorization asking us, do you wish to allow this connection? Now you're wondering, why do we see the security warning even though we have configured un unattended access? Well, the reason for that is, is I've not actually entered in the unattended password. So if I don't enter in that password, somebody will have to be on the other side, click on I'm aware of the risks click on don't show this warning again, and click on accept. Click on accept, and there we are guys, we can see on my screen now, I'm able to see the Nvidia Shield screen. But let's do that again now, but this time let's do completely unattended. So let's close the connection. Okay, that's now being closed. Let's make the connection again, but this time I'm not gonna do anything on the screen here. We can ignore this. I'm just gonna enter in my password for unattended access. So. Let me type that in now. So imagine nobody's actually seeing the screen. Click on OK, and we can see we do get the option login automatically, but let's leave that as is for now. Click on OK, and there we are guys. So I didn't have to wait for them to click on accept or allow. As soon as I typed in the password, it was able to take control. Now let's do the last test where I'm not actually gonna type in any password. So this time let's back out of this application. Let's once again click on TDUK Shield. Now I'm going to type in the password, but this time I'm going to check on the box which says, log me automatically in from now on. Click on OK. We have full control. I can now do this. For example, I can move things around. As we can see, I can say, hey, let's start YouTube. Here's YouTube. That's all working fine. But as we saw, guys, I did actually type in that password. So, so let me now see if I can connect in with actually typing that password. So let's disconnect from here. We're now disconnected. So let's say for example, you, you know, your friend, your customer, your neighbor uh, was using their device and they call you up and they say, hey, I want to watch some great stuff on YouTube. How do I search YouTube? You get your phone, you find the shield on there, you click on that, no passwords, no prompts, you instantly see their screen. You tell them that, hey, all you need to do is go over to search. They go to search and then tell them that, oh, for example, there's a, a guy called Tech Doctor UK. You click on him and there's his channel. So just like that, you've taken complete control from the internet. You can click on things for him. You can open things up for him and you have complete control of his device wherever you are. So definitely do give a thumbs up for that, guys. Okay, let's back out of that. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, in certain scenarios, you will see that having a virtual pointer, click on this menu option here, go to the mouse, and let's go for virtual pointer. So we can see we now see a pointer on the screen. For example, if I open up downloader, that opens okay. But for some reason now guys, I cannot click on the links in here. It just doesn't seem to register that. So certain applications may give you issues with the control, depending on if you are using mouse mode or touchpad mode or pointer mode. Let's click on home. But for example, we can see if I go to browser, you know, I can click on things. I can click on this. I can scroll down, 
um, you know, I can open up links. So we can see generally it does work, but certain situations or certain applications may give you some issues with the control. But in terms of seeing the screen, clicking on most of these options, it does work pretty good, especially for a completely free application. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. So many of you are asking for a process on how we can fully remote control our Android TV device from the internet. So I do hope you like this video, guys. And of course, I haven't forgotten about my Fire Stick users. I'm putting the finishing touches on this application for your device. It will require some modification to give it some extra permission, but that video should be out in the next few days. So make sure you are subscribed for that. So once again, many thanks for your support. Many thanks for your likes and shares. And I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.